Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Stop the Internet Podcast. I'm Kelly. I'm Jimmy. Welcome back. I wanted to ask you this on the podcast, but if you say no, then it's going to go nowhere. But have you watched Saltburn? Oh, God, yeah, I did. Did you like it? It was like a real <laughs> psychological thriller. Yes. I don't know. It like kind of like had me like effed up for a little bit. Yeah. Like the night of, like I was like anxious after watching really? that movie. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. Jacob Elordi looked great, though. Yes. What do you think? I really, really liked it. And I don't get why it became... Is it? Did it just become, like, massive because he's in it and he's really famous? I think a little bit of that. And, like, also it, like, definitely, like, pushed the boundaries of filmmaking in America, I feel like. Oh. Because it was, like, on the main stage, but it was also, like, there was, like, male nudity and, yeah. like, the concepts, like, I feel like aren't really seen that much. I don't and know. And it was filmed in a different ratio. Did you notice that when watching it? I don't know what that means. You so, do. <laughs> most most movies are like they look like your laptop screen they're uh-huh. like long they're 16 by 9 i guess gotcha like if you go to the movie theater it's like a rectangle right but this was like shot almost like a square it might have even been no i don't think it was actually square but it was like <laughs> what would you call this like um like, not as wide like thinner yeah oh no yeah. i didn't even realize that and usually i do notice that at the movies i didn't even notice did that. did you see it in a theater yeah oh I didn't even know it was in theaters. It was in theaters, yeah. And when? I saw it. When was it? Maybe over Thanksgiving, I, I think, maybe. Probably Wait, is when wh- I saw it. I didn't even hear about this movie until like a week and a half ago. I didn't hear about it until we were going. I had no idea what it was about. My friend described it as like a black comedy or something like that. A dark? Comedy? That's what I thought. Dark comedy. But it is it, not apparently a comedy. there's another genre called black comedy. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't even know. I thought, like, oh, it's going to be funny. Yeah. So I was like, oh, great. Like, I could go for a comedy right now. Like, you know, and then we get there and I'm like watching it and I was like, this is not funny. There's nothing funny about no. this. Like, it was creepy. No, there's not and one joke. Scary. In yeah. And like thrilling, like psychologically so thrilling. Yeah. It was really good. I thought it was really good. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. I think I want to watch it again because then, okay, spoiler alert in case you want to see it and you haven't, just skip this part. I think it would be cool to see it through the end and then watch it back and like see if they left any hints about like what the ending was gonna be Mm -hmm. but I really don't think they did like I didn't even know what it was about until like it was like the party scene I guessed that there was gonna be a murder like I I knew he was gonna kill him but then after that I thought that was gonna be the end like I thought he was gonna kill him that's it Mm -hmm. or like take his place in the family I just I think about movies like this like how do they think of this I don't know who wrote this did the director write it I, Props I, to whoever did because it was so good. I also was looking about like in terms of like the video and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, of the movie and how like they were choosing the set mm-hmm. and the like wardrobe of like Jacob Elordi, for example. Like they wanted him in like really light linens and then they wanted like the light coming in from all of the windows because it showed off his physique more, which like oh my built gosh. into like the plot of the movie and stuff like that. So there was a lot in terms of the video editing. In staging of like how they were filming it. And they actually filmed it like I'm pretty sure in a legit mansion. Like it wasn't yeah. it wasn't really a set. Like it was a legit mansion. Yeah. I think most movies are like that though, right? Are they? I don't know. I think movies are typically filmed like movies like that. Like obviously if there's like CGI it's on a set or maybe like parts of it are a set. Right. But if it's like in a house, I think a lot of them do actually like scout physical houses. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I've never actually I just assumed. I don't know. It was not so like when he, like the opening scene when he was like walking through and there were like so many rooms oh like God, it was it really set the scene of being like holy shit these people have money yeah i, I- don't know it's so crazy to think this is just like sci- okay well the reason I brought that up was because <laughs> I just think it's so interesting how like sometimes movies just become like what every single person is talking about mm-hmm. and then there's like I guess like most of them are just because people open Netflix and it's the first thing they see like Netflix pushes like this one movie or this one like show or limited series but I always think it's funny when people say like did you watch like this movie yet because mm-hmm. like why do these movies like I don't get it like why are some movies pushed on us so hard and i didn't see any advertising for it like i only saw Me either people talking about it yeah no same so i was confused about how it ca- how it became this like huge film yeah it's almost like a cultural phenomenon yes right? and the song like that murder on the dance floor. is that an old song it is an old song okay. it's kind of like the running up the hill remember that running up the hill oh yeah, yeah. Of God, yeah. that stranger things i think right i think yeah and it was like an 80s song yes yeah. and then it went to 
number one. Like that murder on the dance floor song is from like forever ago. And now that and I love it. It's yeah. like stuck in my head. It is all a time. very good pop song. Yeah. Like I've been like listening to it like on the reg. Now. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just. Yeah, it is. It's crazy how that happens. Yeah, I don't Even get it there. I watched. Did you watch the Golden Globes last night or no? No. Well, the Golden Globes, like they created a category for like stand up comedy specials. Oh, interesting. and the yeah. And the host Steven was like, like, why don't we think that or the person that was presenting the award was like, yeah, and we should thank Netflix for like paying these people like an insane amount of money to like do these specials now and putting it on there yeah. because they created a category for it. And it's like true. Like Netflix has it's like a monopoly. Like, I know, you know what I mean? And I mean, it's all the streaming services, but you can't deny that Net- like Netflix is. And even when they crack down on like the password sharing, like it mm-hmm. worked in their favor. They're making more money. I'm sure. I don't get how they have money. Like, I guess it's because that many people actually buy the subscription. But to think about how much and I've seen like I am not the first person to say this, but, mm-hmm. but like how do they make so much money to make these like insanely big movies with these the biggest actors in the world and like this the budget of these films like Mm -hmm. I am shocked like it's just crazy to think about how much money is in the world and like how much money these corporations have and like make in profit after they like pay all their employees and then put on all these projects like these films have to cost like hundreds of millions of dollars like Mm -hmm. some of them I guess some are not as big but like how I don't know I just don't get how they make that much money like that is like unfathomable to me I know no it is to me too but I guess like when you're like what is it it's like minimum $12 a month I think at this point I don't know I don't even have Netflix at this point but they also now offered a ad um, account because really? my roommate got the ad one so I think she said it's like $7 a month but it's ad supported so now they're making wow. that money anyways off the ads yeah. you know what I mean like I guess it's product placement too did you watch She's All That with Addison Ray? it was like mm-hmm. years ago no it was the remake of the movie he's or wait no did i say it backwards it's called he's all that it was a remake of she's all that right. there was so much product placement in this movie mm. it was almost like embar- not em- I, I hate to say embarrassing because i think she did a great job in the movie but right. like every scene was like a sprite was like right. the main character like of the, the scene. speaker or like yeah whatever. exactly yeah. it's 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 like painful mm-hmm. i guess like that's the difference between netflix movies and movies that are like the greatest film ever made like there is yeah. not product placement in like Saltburn not that that's like the greatest movie ever made but it's like a very cinematic like beautiful film yeah and I feel like it could like hold its own for many years mm-hmm. whereas he yeah. saw that I don't know no yeah <laughs> no I know what you mean and like Saltburn it was almost like indie like I don't know it yes. was just and I yeah. think that's why because like it did make it to the main stage but it was like more of like an indie or like almost like Sundancey type film because yeah. it was different you know what I mean um I don't know. I want to be like a film buff. Me too. I love going to the movies. Do you have a movie pass? No, but I've been thinking about getting it. I kind of want to get one for the the winter months ahead Mm -hmm. because I really want to see Wonka and a couple other things. Is that Timothy Chalamet, isn't it right? Timothy Chalamet. I think he is an elf. An elf. (laughs) Yeah. People are like obsessed with him and I just like don't get it. I have never watched something that he's in actually. Like what's his biggest project? Do you know? I don't even know. I'm going to look it up. I don't know where he came from. I don't know. People like fawn over him and I, I don't really get it even like kylie jenner right he's with kylie yeah. jenner now wow call me by your name i guess that was huge i never saw it do never saw it little women beautiful boy is that the one where nope i never saw that either i never saw oh shit he's in like every massive film <laughs> interstellar Lady Bird. okay okay actually he's in a shit ton of stuff but i've i've never seen any of this wow i'm really doing well on my my cinephile journey so far yeah i guess we maybe should get that movie pass <laughs> yeah. so that way we have a little bit more of an idea about what the hell is going on yes i actually invented something in my mind but then i i think it already exists it's like what would it be like Hold on. basically it's like an app where it has every movie ever it's like goodreads but for movies mm. so you could like go in and then have your profile and list every movie that you want to see and then every movie that you have seen and like mm-hmm. rate it i think that's such a good idea but i'm that pretty is. sure it already exists i don't know what it's called though i'm sure some form of it does yeah like has but i think that would be great okay if it doesn't exist yeah. i'll invent it nobody steal it from me please trademark yeah <laughs> or whatever patented (laughs) patented yes okay so to switch gears absolutely completely Mm -hmm. there's our first tangent of the day (laughs) yes we're gonna talk about dating and we're gonna play a game called 
<laughs> it's another one of my inventions. <laughs> Here she goes thinking again. Yeah. You can't stop my mind. It's called, I didn't write it down. I'm looking at this note as if it's on here and it's not. Um, I think it's called, The Only Thing Wrong With Them Is. Mm-hmm. And we're going to read stories and debate if our relationship was absolutely perfect. And this is the only problem they had. Would it be breakup worthy for us? That's great. I, I think we're both so chill. It's fine, right? Yeah, we're both so cool and chill yeah. and never mad. No, and not picky at all. Of course. Okay. Let's do it. Yes. Did you get a new phone? Yes. I, I got miss. a new phone. I destroyed my phone, actually. Really? In between seats of a train. Did you see? Wait, I'll show you. No, I mean, it was time, though, right? Weren't you looking at getting a new yes. one anyways? Yes. Yeah. This was... um. <laughs> what? It was so bad. And then here was the side. You can kind of see like... How did that happen? Did it fall out of your pocket? Okay, so I was on a train. And you know those benches that like have the back and you can swing the back and change which way you face? Yeah. So I was sitting on that with my friend and then two of our friends were behind in the row behind and then we start talking to each other. And my friend's like, oh, let's just like flip the thing. And I'm like picking up all my stuff and we're moving. And then we push it back and it sounds like a water bottle like Uh. crunched and... Someone was like, oh my God, I think there's trash in there. I might have even been the one that said it. And so we're just like banging on the seat, like pushing it back. And it like was stuck. Oh my God. And then I'm like, oh my God. God." Like five minutes later, I was like, wait, I can't find my phone. I don't know where it is. (laughs) No. And then my one friend looked in the crack and she's like, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) she had like a shocked expression on her face. And was like covering her mouth. And she's like, I think I see a phone in there. Oh no. And she's like, I'm so sorry. It looked like she saw like a crime right. take place. And I pulled my phone out and got like glass splinters. Oh my god. It gosh. was so bad. And I was going to get a new phone anyway. So I just went. I mean, it's like kind of like crazy how short of a time we would go without having a phone. Mm hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to get a new phone anyway, so I might as well just do it today. Right. So I just went that day immediately and got a new phone. But I I brought it in and the guy was like, well, the ad says we do trade-ins in any condition, but I don't know about that. <laughs> I need oh, to not I'd be take like, well, it. that's what the ad says. I know. I didn't even know that that was an ad. Like, I didn't really right. know what he was talking about. And then my mom said something later, and she's like, they should have taken it. Any condition. Mm. It was so bad. I'm going to insert the picture. I'll keep this in. Yeah. I'll insert the photos so that people can see. It was in the shape of an S. Like, I wish I had more photos of the side. <laughs> <laughs> and it obviously didn't turn yeah, on. And rough. I lost all my photos because oh, no. my iCloud... <laughs> It's full and I just kept clicking like, like, remind me later for like eight months. So it's fine. Anyway, moral of the story is back up your phone. I pay extra for iCloud. I pay for Google Photos. I pay for, I'm like paying for all these things. I. It's the subscriptions again. The thing is, I don't care about text messages. Like if I lost my text, I wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. But there's so many, there's like out of the five free gigabytes, like 4.9 of them are text messages Mm -hmm. and I don't know how to delete them. Like I keep deleting them off of my phone and my laptop and i don't get why they're still being it takes forever yeah i know so when how do i delete it off the icloud like off everything yeah yeah and then start over or like take anything that's on my icloud right now which was nothing because the that's another thing he's like oh i'm not seeing anything on here i'm like well my storage is full so how is there nothing on there right i don't get it i don't either even like the contacts i save people's number in my phone and then it's gone like the next week and i'm like like all the time happens to me what it's probably user error (laughs) like genuinely it probably is but i've gone through the depths of hell i'm like i can't find this contact like i know that i saved your number That's like people so from work weird. you know what i mean like important numbers that i'm like i have to like ask this person this question can't find the number that's so know. weird yeah so but it's probably me it's probably me <laughs> i'll blame it on the iCloud. yeah <laughs> Okay, so I like this person, but, or what was it? What was the game again? The only thing wrong with them is. Yeah, the only thing wrong with them. Okay. Oh, I'm so good. My friends call me, I told you, the red flag assassin. I look for red flags. I love it. I love it. So I'm single. (laughs) Okay, so a lot of these things I feel like 
if there was a bunch of stuff wrong with the relationship, yeah, it's like, of course you would break up with them. And this is just like the icing on the cake. But I really want to play it in the mindset of like every single thing about them is perfect. Like Mm -hmm. there is no red flag. Like they're honest. They're nice. They have a great family, great friends. Like they're upfront with their feelings. Like everything. Yes. Everything is perfect except this. Okay. Okay. Girlfriend messed with my sunscreen and ruined my vacation with my friends. (laughs) Okay. I've been with my girlfriend for six months. Things are going well she does get jealous at times but i think a lot of girls do not just girls well she might be perfect but he's not the way he's talking yeah had a wait sorry i sounded like an idiot when i just yeah <laughs> no you didn't i had a vacation booked with my friends since before we met to cancun first day i get there it's crazy hot i have pale skin so i always wear factor 50 sunscreen so i don't burn i was laid out in the sun for about six hours in the pool and the sea oh the sea mm. you ahoy <laughs> didn't feel burned burnt then when i got back to the hotel i started to feel sick and my body was red all over i was sick and stayed in the hotel that evening in agony i could barely walk from being so burnt i messaged my girlfriend and said what had happened i thought uv was just super intense and i burned she replied with a cry laugh emoji she said that she swapped out my factor 50 and replaced it with factor 2 for a joke i haven't spoken to her for four days now and i'm only just recovering from my sunburn and able to walk normally as my legs were very burnt. I am now peeling though. Haven't left the hotel room at all. Just had friends bring me food while they went out and partied. Not sure what to do. Is this something we break up over or am I overreacting? I feel she did this as she was jealous I'd be hooking up with other girls while away from her. First of all, I assume that it was a man. So sorry, my bad. Oh, I um, also assumed it was a man. <laughs> oh, that's kind of rough. That is like... It's kind don't... of giving salt burn. <laughs> I know Aaron, who's also on this podcast, would be like, end it. <laughs> Because yes. Aaron, Aaron bathes in sunscreen. So yes. if Aaron were here, she would be like, end it. That is it. You know, for my, my skincare. That's true. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that would, I mean, that would piss me off too. I guess, like, my question is why did this person think that that's a joke? Like, right. I, I just feel like so many people have the wrong idea of what a joke is, you know? Mm-hmm. Like stealing someone's like, I don't want to be like dramatic, but I feel like sunscreen could be like a life saving device or like product. Yeah. Well, I mean, it definitely like is the best preventative care for like, yeah, a lot of like skin cancers and stuff like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and like the sun, like it's not going to kill you in one day, but it could severely harm you in one day. So like her version of a joke was like, oh, let me risk severe harm onto my partner haha it's a joke (laughs) yeah and i'm someone that doesn't really get sunburn but i did get sunburn this summer the one day when i was in um sorrento in italy wow because it was like i guess like more southern than i've been in like a while and it was also like coming off like spring where i wasn't really tan already and Mm -hmm. i like was like really hurting for like three days like and i was like traveling so like i didn't really have a choice like i had to just keep it moving but like it could really like mess up your whole trip yeah you know and like you could get like sun poisoning yeah i was just gonna say like you can actually get sick like you have the flu yeah in addition to your whole skin being on fire Mm -hmm. i don't know that would definitely piss me off i would need a very hefty apology about it i would also need an explanation as to why like what was her reasoning Mm -hmm. if she actually was like like maybe in some world the girl was like i didn't think you were gonna actually use this like i I don't know. I think I would. I think I would. I think that would be enough for me, honestly. Well, yeah, I feel like she probably would be like, oh, like, I didn't think that you would get that burned. Like, I thought like, oh, you'd get like a little red, but not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, if you normally use SPF 50, like you obviously know your skin. Yes. You know, it's sensitive. I can't imagine someone being that dumb. I guess like that's too like if that would be the true reason, which is I didn't think you were going to get that burned. I just feel like we got to use common sense. The mm-hmm. man's going to, I'm assuming it's a man now too. But but it's not, yeah. It, I mean, it would, it could be. Oh, I know, oh, she OP. referred to her as she, right? The girl, yeah. The person who switched it is a girl, but I don't know what the OP is. Oh, uh, okay. So I was just like assuming it's a man, which I guess it doesn't matter what it is. But the person was going to Cancun and they had SPF 50 in the bag. Like if you just assumed that they were going to get a little bit burned instead of like not burned at all, it's like you kind of have to be stupid to- mm-hmm. To not understand that. And I feel like 
the stupidity would be enough for me. Yeah, you gotta be. It. Yeah, and it's like a real thing when you're going to Cancun, like somewhere like south like that, yeah. compared to like especially where we live. I don't know where they live, obviously, but like you really gotta take that seriously because the sun hits different down there. It really does. Like you are legit closer to the sun. Like that is insane to think about. Yeah. It's also crazy that this is just a side tangent, but <laughs> it's crazy that the sun affects us like that. Yeah. Like the sun is just a big ball of fire in the sky and it makes our skin red. And it's so far away. It's so far away. Yeah. And it makes us feel warm. Like, I don't but know. But in interstellar with perspective or whatever. Yeah. With, with <laughs> our king. <laughs> our little king. Because he's a little guy. Uh <laughs> I'm such a Timothy Chalamet hater. I don't know why. <laughs> I've never even seen a movie. Well, like, I really don't. We should have him on. Yeah, we should. Podcast. We should watch one of those movies. We this should weekend. get movie passes and see Wonka. He did Willy not Wonka, seem excited. <laughs> Willy Wonka terrifies me. That really? movie kind of scarred me. Yeah. So I don't I know. I love But okay. I would watch it. I would watch it. I would. I, I would watch it. I yeah. love that movie. I was just singing the Golden Goose song the other day mm. when Veruca Salt's like, oh, I want a Golden Goose now. Such a good song. Yeah, you give such energy for that. You, Veruca energy? Yeah. I'm oh, I want I'm a Golden kidding. Goose. <laughs> Daddy, get me one. <laughs> you sound like her. That's a good impression. Really? Yeah. Well, thanks. Okay, anyway, what were you saying? Oh, I don't know. I think I was going to say, because we said the sun's close, but like really oh, yeah. it's not. Oh, or, you were saying We said the sun's far, but really the sun's not far oh really when you think about the galaxy <laughs> when you think about the universe yeah. yeah we are so small break up with your boyfriend <laughs> think about the sun yeah anyway dump her ass for dumping out your sunscreen yes she's done okay yeah. yep decided i guess she's done this is a 27 year old couple a male and a female okay my boyfriend has still not told friends about us oh wait edit the ages were a typo 29 female, 27 male. Okay. My boyfriend and I have been together for three months and have known each other for four years. Today I found out that he hasn't told anyone in his life that we're dating. Needless to say, I'm a little upset. I feel like he's hiding me from his friends, and now I understand why he won't let me visit his apartment. Hmm. This is really hurting me, and I have told all my friends and family about him. What do I say to him? Edit, he has now lied twice about telling his friends we were dating. He tells me he won't introduce me to his friends because I'm unpredictable, but then won't tell me what I do wrong. And now he wants to know why I'm so upset, but I haven't accused him of lying yet. Okay, so every single thing about this man, on paper, this is your dream man. Like, write every single quality you've ever wanted in a partner, and it's this person. And this is the only negative. No. <laughs> that's all I had to hear. No, absolutely not. No, that's shady. I think that when I, this is like one of my like major questions that I like to ask people when I'm interested in dating them. I ask, how would your friends describe you? That's because such a good question. I just feel like that. Yeah. And like I like your friends are who know you, knows you best. Right. A lot of times your friends know you better than your family knows you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like you're really like there's no reservations with your friends. Yeah. Like so if you can't have that with him because like he's hiding you from his friends like absolutely not. No. Nope. That is such a good question to ask people though. How would your friends describe you? I would also be done with this person. Yeah. Pivoting. There's like trust built into that. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I think everyone can be described as a Dave or a Buster. A Dave mm. is like reliable. You know, they probably wear a collared shirt. They are more like type A. And then a buster is more like wild and crazy and like likes to have a good time and like you never know their next move. And both of them are great. Mm -hmm. And both of them like you don't you could have like traces like you could be a buster with Dave tendencies. OK. You know, how would you describe yourself? Oh, I don't know. When you said it like that, I feel like I'm more of a Dave. Yeah. Callie really convinced me that I am type A the okay. other day and I didn't think that I was. Um, but I guess maybe I am like a little bit like I I think I have type A tendencies. So yeah. I guess I'm more of a Dave. But every once in a while, I like to be a buster. <laughs> I'm definitely that. in college and everything. I was definitely a buster, but I think yeah. I've grown into becoming more of a Dave. Yeah. How about you? I think I'm a buster with like Dave tendencies mm. in certain areas of my life. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I haven't become full Dave yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're like a little bit younger than me, right? Like a year. Yeah. Not that much. Yeah. I don't think it's that much. Uh, maybe in the next year you'll become a Dave. Don't tell me that. 29's knocking for me. So I'm not ready to sense. settle down. Wow. Yeah. 29. How do you feel about it? I don't care. I feel like I don't care either. Honestly, every age has been better for me, I feel. Yeah. But 29 definitely is like... 
I'm like, wow, I really am almost like 30 years old. Yeah. Which is like wild to me. It's not a bad thing, I don't think. But I'm like, wow, okay. I've been around the block. 29 does just feel so much older than 27 or 28, but yeah. it's actually not. No. Like I at know. all. But like, at what age are you no longer considered a young adult? And now you're just like an adult. I guess it depends on how old the, the speaker is, like who's using that term, you know? I yeah, I don't know. Because if I was describing young adults, I also feel like when it comes to age and like, oh, that person's young or old, it, I think it has more to do with how they carry themselves yeah. and less to do with their actual like number of years alive because there are so many people that I'm like oh they're like young and fun but they're like 35 and then there's people that are like 23 that I'm like yeah you you're like so mature and like put together and people would probably look at them and be like oh yeah they're old so then when my friends like engage in the like we're so old topics and like Mm -hmm. the self-deprecating humor I'm like who's we like speak for yourself I'm not old yeah yeah and I don't necessarily like feel old you know what I mean and it's like whatever I don't know sometimes I'll like I do see like I was talking to someone who is like 38 and we were kind of talking about like music interests and everything like that and like I love Beyonce obviously I mm-hmm. love Britney Spears stuff like that and then he was like oh my god yeah so like you have two out of the three but you definitely like had to be like a huge Mariah Carey fan too right and Mariah Carey was just like a little bit before like you know Britney and like mm-hmm. Beyonce like were really big and like I'm really not yeah like Mariah Carey like I like Mariah Carey you know what I mean I know the hits and everything she's definitely like legendary I iconic queen queen icon legend 100 percent. but i wouldn't consider myself like a huge fan of mariah yeah. carey she did come to philly and like i kind of looked at tickets just because it was a christmas special and i love her christmas music but like if britney were coming yeah i would 100 percent be there beyonce obviously i went like yeah. you know what i mean so i don't know it, 10 years could be like a big difference too in terms of like age with that yeah so it's i'm like i am getting older i don't know i don't know i just feel like it depends on the person a lot of times when it comes to like age and age differences like multiple of my friends have recently started dating younger guys Mm -hmm. like a few years younger than them and like you would never know unless you specifically asked each of them what their age was today and like I I just think it has more to do with like personality and like interest because I'm sure there's like lots of people our age that maybe do like Mariah Carey but I see what you're saying about like it is like a generational thing like what was popular when you were a kid right yeah 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 I don't know and that's good for your friends that are having that experience because I changed the dating app age range yeah because I was I dated a couple younger guys and then I was like holy shit like irresponsible buck wild like just like off the rails Wait, you were or the guys were they were oh okay. like that I was like I totally like it's nothing wrong with you like I was that way for a little bit you know yeah. what I mean but totally like I was like I can't do this you anymore. didn't like it so now I've been dating older guys yeah yeah which has been okay good I think you know but the two that I have in mind I was like <laughs> How the other half lives. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, how do you live like this? Like, I would yeah. be dead. I would be At dead. At this age, I'd be dead. Wait, I heard us. A... Okay, hold on. No, I have to stop talking. <laughs> we we were talking before we got on the podcast about how we just go on tangents all the time. And I was just going to say another tangent. Should I say it? I just heard this fact yeah. that like once you turn 25, your body stops reproducing cells more rapidly than like in theory they're used up. Mm. So that's why when you're really young and like drinking alcohol, alcohol your body bounces back so fast it's because your your body's creating more cells than it's using so it can like turn over these Mm. like poisonous alcohol affected cells like way faster and then once you pass 25 i really do feel like it's like a wall when it comes to drinking and it's because your your cells slow down isn't that so sad that tracks that definitely makes sense i believe it okay let's talk about productivity i have trouble focusing i think that's a pretty common problem in today's day and age i sometimes Sometimes turn to coffee. My sister has used caffeine pills, which I hate to say I took, but I've discovered a solution. Mm, let's hear about it. Cue Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a little health shot that you drink in the morning in addition to or instead of your daily caffeine. Magic Mind is great because it takes away all your jittery caffeine nerves and it just makes you feel like smooth sailing for the day. It helps me while I work. It helps me stay on top. Task. It also just tastes very healthy, so that's a win for me mm. in the morning. Yeah, what are some things that it's like helped you with like when you've been taking it? I definitely drink less caffeine. I feel the need to drink less coffee, and sometimes I 
don't drink any coffee. And then later in the day, I realized that I took one sip and then left my coffee sitting there and the glass is full, Mm -hmm. which I think is so interesting because I didn't think about it until like later. Like it was almost like I took Magic Mind and then I forgot. And then I'm like, wait, I didn't even have to drink coffee today to focus. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So Magic Mind is full of natural ingredients that work together to help your brain in more ways than one. Ingredients include matcha, which gives you a little caffeine boost, ashwagandha, which reduces stress and anxiety, cordyceps mushrooms that reduce inflammation and help your immune system. It also supports higher energy levels and physical endurance. So, so many good qualities in Magic Mind. I have really been loving it, so I'm excited to share it with all of our listeners. So, if Magic Mind sounds like something you're interested in, you can use the link in our bio or go to magicmind.com slash Jan Stop, J-A-N-S-T-O-P, and use our code STOP20 for a discount. It's really great because they're running an extra promotion during January, where if you use that link and use the promo code STOP20, you'll get an extra 20% off, which gets you to 75% off, basically, if you buy a subscription. So the more days in a row that you drink Magic Mind, the better it works for you. You get those prolonged benefits going. So the subscription's a great option, but you can also try a one-time purchase to see if you like it. Use code STOP20 for 20% off and let us know what you think. Thank you, Magic Mind, for sponsoring our episode. Should I break up with my boyfriend for going on a cruise without me for his birthday? I, 24 female, have been with my boyfriend, 26 male, for about a year and a half. This year is his 27th birthday and he decided to go on a cruise with his friend, 46 male, instead of me. It's not something I hadn't brought up and I tried to plan something with him a few weeks prior to him announcing the trip but he said it was too late to plan anything. Then, suddenly, this much older, not married friend wants to take a trip and they book it almost instantly. Without giving too much detail, in hopes someone we know reads this, this particular birthday is very significant to my boyfriend. He's always had this hunch he'd be part of the 27 Club. (laughs) Sorry, that's not funny. Do you know what that is? No. It's like when a bunch of celebrities die at the age of 27. Oh, yeah. Like Amy Winehouse was in it. Um, I don't know who else. And this was in it as if it's real. Sorry. (laughs) And this would be the last birthday he celebrates. We also took a trip with his family for a few days to a rundown older town for a sporting team he and his family are all in on and I was just a plus one which he called his birthday trip. I believe just to make me feel better. Okay, so like he's calling it the birthday trip just to make her feel better about. Mm -hmm. Okay. He left today for the cruise and will be there for a full seven days without service, unreachable on his actual birthday. Is it wrong for thinking if this could be your last birthday, wouldn't you want to spend it with someone you love? He's also only known this friend for roughly a year. It's not necessarily cheating I'm worried about or even care about at this point. I'm mostly just wondering, is it wrong if I end things over this? Sounds like you got a sugar daddy if you ask me. The guy? Yeah. Maybe. How old's the other guy? 46. 46 male and a 26 male. Hmm. Is the guy paying for the trip? Is it a gay cruise? That's a good point, too. <laughs> That's where my mind goes. I don't know. I would be a little upset if I were her. I mean, they, they've they been together for a year and a half. It's a decent amount of time. Um, yeah. I don't know. Interesting dynamic. Oh, my God. The second comment is, my first guess is that they're secret lovers. See? Honestly, tell him you want an answer as to why he did it. If it isn't a good answer or straight up, pack and go. Yeah, I don't know. I do think that one, it's definitely like a little yeah. interesting. I don't actually necessarily think that's that weird, though. Like, I could see wanting to do a trip with like one friend over doing something like local. I don't know. I, I guess I just don't. To me, they're still very young. Like, they're 24 and 27. So, in theory, I feel like once you like get married and settle down with someone, it's almost like expected because your life partners that you're going to spend like every single like Mm -hmm. life event with this person and I just don't think it's weird to still value spending those like life things with your friends when you're still young and unmarried no I agree I I yeah definitely 100% like even thinking like Callie was dating her boyfriend for a pretty long time and then we went all around Europe together yeah you know what I mean like just the two of us like two friends and we before that like and we went to Nashville like last summer yeah and it was just our friends like right who came 
with like that are like one was engaged and stuff like that and like still went on a friend trip you know what I mean I think that there's room for that I don't know it just seems like a little sketchy the way that yeah I guess because talking the, about it yeah like at first he's like oh it's too late to plan anything I don't know I guess this is what I'm thinking though if it's like the perfect relationship and nothing has gone wrong in a year and a half except he was like no babe whatever don't plan anything who cares it's too late and then maybe he just got this offer that he didn't even consider was an option before from a friend and the guy's like oh this cruise is still booking and it's not that expensive we should just go he could be like oh yeah you're right I'll just go with you and we'll do a little guys thing and then I have Mm -hmm. the rest of my life to be with my partner yeah no I think that's totally fair I still think it's a sugar daddy though deep down I really do I don't know but I see where you're coming from. Yeah. But I, I don't think it would be a deal. It should be a deal breaker because I think like you said. Yeah. It's okay to like do things with your friends. Yeah. I guess do press him about it though. Like yeah, see definitely. what the answer would be. I'd definitely be curious. I would actually be wary of someone that got super offended that their partner didn't spend like a certain event. I don't know. I guess I see where she's coming from because he's like, oh, he thinks he's going to die this year. We're like, let's be for real. Right. He's not part of the 27 Club. This like fake conspiracy theory about celebrities like that's just like a random thought that your like boyfriend had one day like it's that's irrelevant yeah it's not gonna be his last birthday like don't think like that no I, I, I think like the in where I think that she's valid in feeling is that she tried to plan something with him and he said yes it's too late to plan something and then he just like picked up and went like I think she is valid in feeling hurt about that yeah so she should talk to him about that part of it yeah definitely talk to him yeah yeah I would not end it though I would accept this behavior no matter what Mm, okay (laughs) you're so chill I'm just such a cool girl yeah Am I wrong for deleting my girlfriend's Twitter? This is a 20-year-old male and a 19-year-old female. She was scrolling through Twitter a few weeks ago, and I saw one of her own tweets she just posted that said, He really t- oh, God. <laughs> He really took away my ability to walk. I asked why she posted that. She said she didn't and refused to show me anything. She has a private account still with hundreds of followers, and I told her it was a violation of my privacy. She still denied. A few days ago, in the new year, I snooped since I felt like my privacy was already invaded. I managed to view her tweets from a different account she was logged into and following. Several of her followers are people she knows in real life, and she had been posting intimate details about our relationship every day. About me, our sex life, about the kind of hobbies I did, specific art I made, our city. And she has her face on her account, so I am literally trackable with all of this. She claimed I was neurodivergent hyper fixations because I can draw from memory. She talked about me sexually several times and she talked about what we did live updating day to day when I confronted her about it she told me she didn't know it was wrong so I asked her why she hid it and she didn't respond I told her I still care about her and we could make it work if she detoxed and instead made normal social media accounts she agreed after several days I snooped again feeling justified in the invasion of my own privacy she was still doing the exact same thing me still included so I dicked around and found a way to log into the account and I deleted it. I saw the email notification for reactivation and I texted her saying specifically, WTF is your problem. You literally talk about using my body on your Twitter and you promise you delete them. Twitter cannot be more important to you than our relationship. Okay. I feel like all the other details are irrelevant. So the guy deleted her Twitter account. We should play this from both sides because I feel like they both did something weird. I don't think he did anything weird. You don't think it's weird that he literally deleted the account no. though? No. Okay. I mean, I don't know that I would ever do that. Yeah. But I think that, like, it is, I think that that is, like, one, a trust thing, a privacy thing. Like, I wouldn't want all of my shit out there on the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, either. Like, I think he's totally justified in how he feels in that way. I would probably convince her and be like, listen, like, you are deleting every tweet that involves me. And, like, I yeah. will sit here with you and you're going to delete all of them. And if not, then I would delete the account 100%. Because I wouldn't want my stuff out there on the yeah. internet. Like, That's crazy. No one needs to know those details about my life. I do feel like it would hit harder to like sit down with your partner and be like, this is such a violation and I'm going to watch you (laughs) delete all of them right now. Wait, I feel like that sounds like a parent with a child, though. Is that controlling? I don't think it's controlling because it's my life that you're 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 tweeting about my life. Yeah, it's like you're standing up for yourself. It's not your life. Yeah, Yeah. like you are not going to put and like claiming that I'm neurodivergent and things like that, like on Twitter, like that's fucked. So no. Yeah. Nope. I'm totally on his side. 100%. No, I would delete. I would delete. <laughs> I was going to say I would delete the relationship. Delete the relationship. No, Click. I would. Yeah. Delete the Twitter and then delete the girlfriend. Yeah. And God, who knows what she's going to tweet now? 
Once oh he dumps God, her ass, oh, she's going to go on a rampage. Yeah. But yeah, that would be a deal breaker for me. Yeah. I did date someone that like tweeted about every waking moment of their life. And I was like, why? Yeah. Why? Like get a journal. Yeah. Get a journal. Like, please like journal. Like I think everyone needs an outlet and but you, the world doesn't need to be your outlet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's totally fair. Like, but write it down. Don't put it on Twitter for everyone to see. That is a really weird. Like, I'm trying to think I'm trying to picture dating dating someone that was like always using Twitter and it wasn't like for a job that it is like what is the point of Twitter I love Twitter I'm on Twitter all the time wait but I guess but I don't tweet I, I don't think it's weird to tweet like thoughts you have but to do like life updates like that like yeah. what is the point of that right like nobody cares about you you're not a celebrity like I couldn't walk that's a lot yeah <laughs> okay we're done we're done was this a stupid reason to lose interest in a guy? For some background, my ex was super controlling and mean to me. He would never take no for an answer. Because of that, I sometimes interpret fairly mundane interactions as someone trying to push my boundaries. I was talking to this guy for about three weeks and he seemed pretty on the same page about a lot of critical stuff as me. Near the beginning, I told him I'm not big on watching videos on my phone. I explained my reasons. I get overstimulated with noise and I was working at a place that I was required to have my phone on silent. Island, so I literally could not watch them at work and I didn't like risking leaving the volume up. One day he sent me multiple videos while I was working. I politely reminded him that I can't watch videos at work and I'm not a huge fan in general. He starts arguing with me that it's under a minute and not that hard to remember to turn the volume back down. I said no again and he sent about four follow-up messages about how he swears one day he's going to get me to watch videos and that he wants to be the one to help me get into liking YouTube. I know this is a fairly minor thing but I feel like he was basically saying you already explained to me why you don't want to do this, but I want you to, so I'm going to keep on pushing even though I know you already said no. I don't know if I feel like giving him another chance after that. I feel stuck between if I'm too picky, I'll be alone forever, and I'm not settling for anyone that makes me feel pressure to do anything ever again, even if it's something small. Did I judge this guy too harshly? Are most dudes going to be like that if I'm not interested in watching clips and reels? I, I included this because I feel like this is something I would do <laughs> to someone else, and I I feel bad about it now like hearing her backstory yeah i don't know and I, I i mean i feel like it's fair for her to be like hey like i can't watch these right now but like maybe if it's like something that you're interested in that you want to share it with me like i'll watch them later yeah but if she's like dead like i have no because i feel like it seems like that's one of his interests that he's trying to share with her right and like kind of show her like oh i think this is funny like maybe you would appreciate it too yeah i could like appreciate that but i think that like she could also draw the boundary of being like i'm not going to watch these at work but like i'll maybe watch some of them later on right you know I feel like that would be like a good way to solve that maybe yes I agree I feel like yeah ex okay I totally agree with that because like I don't have a job that I could watch videos all day like I go like the whole day without looking at my phone you've texted me sometimes even like when I'm at work which is fine like people text me all the time at work but sometimes I just don't answer them until I get yeah. home at like four o'clock because I have kids in front of me all day yeah. like I can't you know what I mean so like there are jobs that exist that you can't do that right and to uh, get what well, yeah okay I don't know the way the guy's saying it. I do kind of feel like maybe it's just triggering because the last boyfriend didn't let them say no to anything or like put up boundaries. But mm -hmm. I do feel like this is kind of a common thing. And it is like interesting to think about the line and like what actually matters to you to like draw a line. Like is the videos that big of an issue or is it more that he isn't like quote unquote taking no for an answer when right. you're saying like I can't watch the videos right now like what is actually the problem because I do think that if this guy is perfect and you really liked him and everything else was great like you could just say exactly what you said like look I just have a job that I cannot ever watch it at work and I'm never going to if you want me to like explore your interest let's do it between like these hours and like yeah. on this platform but I do feel like I have said and heard many people in healthy relationships be like oh I know you've never gone ice skating but like I'm gonna make you ice I say that to people all the time I'm like I'm gonna make you snowboard I say it to my friends yeah I have I said it to you I have <laughs> the preface to a bunch of my friends like Jimmy Lara Rebecca I don't know if Rebecca's gonna happen sadly Kaylee like I am going to force all of them to ski you're never this gonna get Rebecca to ski <laughs> <laughs> She'll be in the lodge though, looking yeah, yeah, real cute. True. true. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm like, is that mean of me? 
Because at first glance, all those people were like, no, I don't ski. But I'm like, I think I'm going to force you to ski. I'm going to create a day where we all go to the mountain. Mm -hmm. We're going to support each other. We're going to have fun. And you're going to like it. But yeah. like, I guess like what is too far? <laughs> like, obviously, if they're like saying like, I can never ski because I have past drama, like I'm not going to keep like pushing. Right. But I do see where the guy is coming from in a way. Because when you're dating someone, you want to share your interests. And like, if they've never heard of this thing that you like, or if they're not into it i can see how like tempting it would be to try to get them to like it yeah i just think that there's like a tasteful way about going yes about it and doing it because like if again if he's like getting mad at her like i don't get why you won't watch these at work like blah blah, blah. like it, at the end of the day it's fucking video and yeah. that's my job like right. is it really that big a deal that i'm gonna wait till after work to watch the video but in the same breath it kind of sounds like she's like i have no interest in watching his videos at all and like i don't care about his videos True. and like clearly it's something that he does care about so like in a relationship you need to kind of like you could have your own interests but also like there are some things that like I feel like you should try to see or kind of try out you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yeah I don't know I don't think it's like a deal breaker but I like I think a conversation would be great I agree I agree we need more info from him mm -hmm. yeah or her I guess well no, yeah true. more him I also just I can't really tell like how she's sure. yeah and I can't really tell like how she's describing him you know what I mean yeah I also think that if, in that one, if they really liked this guy, I kind of feel like they would put that in. Like, the only thing said about the guy was, I was talking to this guy for about three weeks, and he seemed pretty on the same page about a lot of critical stuff as me. Like, that's the only positive thing they mm. said about this relationship so far. Like, I, I, I wonder more if this person actually likes the guy. It's like, because if you're just talking to someone, like, you know how when you first meet someone, like, a lot of times, especially if it's like a healthy relationship, you mm -hmm. take the time to decide if you like the person based on how well you know them. Right. So three weeks, like, you probably don't even know the guy super well. No. So maybe she just hasn't decided if she liked him yet. But I feel like if she was starting to like him, maybe she would have said a little more than just, like, we're on the same page about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, do you actually like this person? Yeah. And if, I mean, if he's being pushy about the videos or whatever, then, like, maybe she's feeling pushed away by him. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. I think mm. we, we need to explore that one. Yeah. Okay. I included this one because I have a little bit of, like, a personal anecdote. My boyfriend is against me taking medicine for my mental health. They're a female and a male, both 23. Basically, I'm dating this guy for a few months now. He's bipolar and has major anxiety, like me, and the difference between us is I believe in taking medication for mine since my episodes are known to be scary, and he just doesn't take meds. He doesn't see the point in taking them, doesn't support them. I've mentioned I've been off mine for a month or two because my psychiatrist couldn't see me, and it's finally hitting me hard, and I've been depressed. He told me I don't need the meds and is constantly trying to talk me out of taking them. Is there any way I can get him to possibly change his mind or see my viewpoint? Has anyone else dealt with something like this? It's really odd. I'm also in therapy, so the combination of therapy and medication has helped me a lot. But anytime I talk about it to him, it's as if he's just not supportive of me needing to use meds for a little extra help. Mm, okay. That would piss me off. Like, who are you to say what I need for my own mental health? Yes. And like, she's in therapy and also seeing a psychiatrist. Yes. Like, trained professionals in this field who would not be prescribing medicine unless it was totally necessary. Yes. So... F you, man's. Yes. Okay. I <laughs> That's dated, how I feel. I, I dated know. someone think? similar. Yes. No, I I 100% agree. And I almost feel like, I don't know how long this guy has felt this way, but in a relationship that I was in, it was like the more it went on, the more this person started thinking like, oh, you don't need medication. Like you don't need prescriptions. Like don't do that. Like that's bad. And like just as time went on, those like comments and that like opinion of his got more intense. And I'm like, you. it was so annoying annoying because I feel like it was just the start of like all these thoughts that this guy had about like the world and mm -hmm. like oh but no prescription medication it actually just hurts you like it's evil and like all these things and like if you don't understand an industry like you don't have to force your own opinions based on absolutely nothing and like Instagram I feel like people just get information about like prescription medicine for example through like Instagram accounts that are pushing like holistic medicine or like anything that's not like a prescription and just everything is biased and I just hate the idea of people telling you especially in relationships that the care that your medical doctors are giving you is not good enough because of like x y and z that I heard on Instagram yeah I agree and I mean I'm like guilty I think we all are that like that is one of our major forms of like taking in information now yeah social media like you know what I mean but like everyone needs to be careful I think sometimes two people and I mean now this is my own bias showing I feel 
like a lot of times people who maybe I'll get, get hate comments for this people that are like so deeply ingrained in like that thought claim to be like super critical thinkers and they're not I'm like no like there's a line between like critical thinking and like you are down a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories yes and like that doesn't mean that you're a critical thinker that means that you are down a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories yes like I think part of critical thinking is like really looking at every side of a situation and taking in like empirical evidence and data and this and that and like your own experience you know what I mean like I am a speech pathologist I use evidence-based practice which like also includes my clinical expertise that maybe isn't exactly what the data maybe showed in this one study that's part of like that so when people like that try to put their own beliefs on other people then I think it turns into like you think I'm being controlled by them and you're actually just trying to control me yeah so you're not going to do that if you want to do your whatever go ahead yes I know that I have strep throat and it is a bacterial infection that requires medicine yeah and my brain will be treated the same way like if I have a chemical imbalance in my brain that I know I need medicine for and I know how I feel because I've been in therapy I've been seeing a psychiatrist I'm off the medicine and I'm going batshit yeah and I need the medicine you're not going to be the person tell me like try going for a walk yeah like no like this is something that my body requires yeah this guy that I was dating at one point I have asthma that's like exercise induced so like I don't always have it on like the day to day but pretty much when I exercise or when I encounter like allergens Mm -hmm. I need an inhaler and he was like trying to convince me that my inhaler was making my asthma worse and that I shouldn't take it and I'm like oh really because I can't breathe when I don't take it, but then I take it and I can breathe. So how is that making it worse? Mm -hmm. He's like, well, if you just stop using it forever, you'll revert to like your original self and you won't need it. And I'm like, but I needed it because I didn't have it. Like there was a time in my life where I never took it. I couldn't breathe when I ran, went to the doctor. He gave me the solution. It worked. And now I take it on an as needed basis. Mm -hmm. So like if your theory is correct, which I'm sure there are certain things that the more you take them, the more you need them. What was the first catalyst of me needing this then? Like your theory is missing a huge part. And so I don't believe you because you're like your confirmation bias is like showing, you know, you don't. I don't know. It just is so annoying because then it just got to the point where it's like everything you do. But it's like, this is why it's bad for you. This is why it's bad for you. Like, don't do that. Chocolate cake is bad for you. I'm like, I can't take it anymore. Right. No. Yeah. It's so annoying. I don't need your your irrelevant, uneducated opinion about every single thing I do that's bad for me. Right. And also, like, I don't care. Yeah. I, I literally do not care. Like, if I feel better because I'm able to dab the inhaler and I could breathe, that's all I need to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's also, like, there were so many things in, like, the I don't care mindset. Like, if I eat a piece of chocolate cake after I eat normal food all day, I would literally be like, I don't care. Like, yeah, maybe this is not the most healthy thing to put in my body, but, like, yeah, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It really just annoyed me because I also do try to be, like, a reasonable person and like see both sides of things when it's relevant and there were times where I'm like yeah like I don't need to do x y and z but I'm gonna do a b and z and I feel like I try to live my life balanced and like see both sides of things like I said when it's relevant and then you're so right about like the being a critical thinker I feel like you're somewhere in the middle Mm -hmm. when you're a critical thinker you're like not on way on that side or way down the rabbit hole you Mm -hmm. need to like walk in the middle and then this person was just so far Mm -hmm. down this hole that I'm like you think you're critical thinking but you're ignoring a whole entire argument just because it doesn't suit your argument right yeah and then it turns into it turns into yum yucking and shame Mm -hmm. literally shame like things like that yeah and like I now I'm on like my shame thing because I'm like back on my like crazy like Brene Brown like lover whatever thing but like it does it turns into like the Brene brown quote you liked um clear is kind i think oh, clear right? is that's kind. something yes. that i share with you clear is kind here. but she is like a shame researcher that's like what she studies and yeah. i feel like it turns into that where people are putting this on to you and trying to shame you mm-hmm. and make you feel like you're in the wrong and it's like well no i'm not actually like there are millions of people that feel the same way as me yeah there are some things that like obviously turn out to be true eventually but like these things for example like medicine and things like that have been studied so relentlessly studied like mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're under a microscope and in some ways, yeah, like big pharma, I get it. Yeah. But there are some things that it's, that's not it. Like you are reaching so hard. And again, I don't care. 
it's like they you could care i don't care yes (laughs) it's like they take this like one example of the most extreme thing that's ever happened within this industry and they're like and you like this anecdotal story on a very small scale this is now being compared Mm -hmm. it's like yeah i get it i see where this like horrible thing happened within this industry who who i don't know i don't have an example but like that doesn't mean that every single thing within that industry from now until forever is also going to be that bad right and i feel like that's how like certain people see things and then yeah they try to like push it on you and like like educate me as if i am not able to make critical assessments myself Mm mm-hmm based on like talking to professionals that I trust. Like, right. And then I also think that like that person saw like a few doctors that they didn't like. And I had been seeing the same doctor since I was a kid and I loved my doctor. He actually retired and now I see a new doctor who I also got so lucky and I really like. And it's like, just because you don't like your doctor mm-hmm. doesn't mean that every doctor on earth is bad. No. I just can't take the like overarching Yeah, and you build the trust theories. of your doctor and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, no, I feel like it's like the people that are like, oh, that person took a Tylenol that morning and then they had a heart attack and died in the afternoon. No one should take Tylenol. Yes. Because yes. You're like it's going to make everyone have a heart attack and die. And it's like, well, Tylenol has been around for however many decades now. And that one outlier is yeah. not tainting the entire thing. Like they also maybe had like this, this and this inside their brain that no one knew about. Yeah. And they just so happened to take a Tylenol that day. Yeah. And they also had an aneurysm that was slowly leaking into their brain that they didn't know about. And yeah. they took a Tylenol because they had a headache. And then they died because they had the, the aneurysm, thinking that they just had a headache. And then they'll they'll say things like, and then that person gets marked as aneurysm death and yes. not Tylenol death. Yes. So Tylenol kills yeah, way more people than like we know. And it's like, yes. you have to be marked as something. You yeah. can't be marked as every single medical problem you've ever had. Like, mm-hmm. I can't. <laughs> yeah, so, so no, that annoying. one would, going back to the story, nope. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Me too. And he's trying to control you and don't let him. You know your health. You, you're going to the right people. I agree. Yeah. Oh, God. That would be the fucking day. <laughs> I. It's so annoying. Yeah. Nope. Let's do one more. <laughs> Wait, this is actually a great transition. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Been seeing an amazing guy. The only problem is that he doesn't believe in dinosaurs. This sounds silly, but it has been a real issue. This guy is almost perfect. Our personalities fit so well. He's funny, very lovable, and caring. I've never met someone whom I connect with this much, just him. The problem, though, is that he can be a bit dot 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 off when it comes to conspiracies. (laughs) Wow, this is such a great (laughs) transition. Yeah, it is. He doesn't think dinosaurs are real. He believes that all of those before Homo sapiens fossils are fake, that the moon landing is also fake, etc. I'd want to say I'm a pretty open-minded person, and even though we agree on a lot of things, there are things like these that are just off. Honestly, this guy is just too amazing that I might be willing to let these pass, but what do you guys think? I would like for you to talk first. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I go through phases of my life where I am entertained and like interested in certain theories. Some you could call conspiracy theories just because they're like entertaining or it's like, ooh, that's an interesting story. I feel that it's a problem when you start living your life based off of these theories and like using these theories to confirm for yourself that every single thing on earth is a lie. (laughs) I just know someone (laughs) (laughs) that it started with like a few little things like that. Like, oh, the moon landing, like the earth might actually be flat. Like I can't even, it's just every conspiracy theory in the book, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just got to the point where it's like any idea literally at all that like the masses believe this person stopped believing just because Mm -hmm. most people believed it or like the government was the one that said it and it's such an annoying way to live i don't care if the moon landing is fake i guess and i'm sure someone could tell me why like that would actually affect me Mm -hmm. but like okay they they touched the moon in whatever year that was or they did it in a hollywood basement 1969 we went to the moon in 1969 don't you remember that song californication we no. went to the moon no. in 1969 <laughs> no <laughs> okay sorry i know the other side i know the californication by red hot chili peppers when they say space may be the final frontier but it's made in a hollywood basement oh i never even yeah it's a great song wow okay are the red hot chili peppers conspiracy theories I, or 
do they know the truth? I don't know. <laughs> no, I agree with you because I think that it, that's what I was going to say. Like, I think it walks a fine line. Yes. Because, I mean, conspiracy theories could be really harmful. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we saw, like, in our country alone, conspiracy theories literally, not to get political, like, could end a democracy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. it could get, like, crazy. Like, it could yeah. really go far. So, to have someone that could jump into those conspiracy theories, like, so easily could become dangerous to me, I feel mm -hmm. like. You know what I mean? Because I don't know what you're going to, like, what you're going to question next or, like, yes. where your mind's going to go on this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's, like, something that's, like, proven fact. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, easy, chill with that. You know what I mean? I don't think it's a bad thing to question things. I think we all should always be questioning yes, things. Yes, totally. But it just, like, I think it could get annoying, like you said, too. Yes. Like, it would just bother me after a point where I'd be like, I really, like, I don't want to talk about this. Yes. Like, I think this, and I trust whatever, and you think that, and, like, that's good. I'm not here to debate it, and, like, yeah. let's just keep it moving. Like, we don't it, have to look into it. You're so right. It, like, could become all-consuming. Yeah. So, like, if you think the moon landing is fake, and that's the only thing you think is fake like okay sure think it's fake like mm -hmm. if you think like i can't even think of another one that's like irrelevant like that but i don't know let's take like the flatter theory like okay sure let's say the earth is flat now what right i don't care like i am still gonna wake up tomorrow and my life is gonna be exactly the same so like why are we like spending our whole life trying to prove that like we're being lied to also let's just be for real like the earth the world we can't agree on one thing and you think the only thing that every single world leader that ever lived is gonna <laughs> agree on is to lie about the shape of the earth like right. it's just okay i have so much past like built up resentment that's towards crazy yeah this, but like it's just like okay what's the point yeah. yeah all right let's say you're right now what now what i don't care so anyway you don't believe in dinosaurs it's all a lie why mm -hmm. what's the reason why why did they create fake fossils right to control us <laughs> like, yeah i would I be more care. curious like this person i would be more curious about if there are other conspiracies that they're like dabbling in like all yes. the time yeah because if it's just the dinosaurs like okay whatever i still love to go to a museum and see this huge I, dinosaur thing you know what i mean i guess though like even if that's the only thing that this person believes like conspiracy theory wise like maybe they don't even see it as a conspiracy theory maybe they just like see it as fact like oh yeah all of that stuff is fake like i feel like that kind of shows like person's intelligence because why i love that you just said that is that mean no i no, i don't think i just think like think like two steps deeper no i know that's why it is like <laughs> some things that's scary for me but then like i think about like other things that like i don't know like the smiley face killer like i think that's a real thing there are some other conspiracies i'm trying to think of but are they conspiracies then or are they just theories like what even is a conspiracy theory like mm -hmm. what makes it a theory and what makes it a conspiracy theory well i mean theories are meant to be tested right right i, I guess know. i don't know i did read something about how conspiracy theories are grown in where people feel like they don't have answers so they make up their own that's what a conspiracy theory is created hmm. out of i'm pretty sure that's what it interesting had said i was reading something the other day but so i guess maybe that's it interesting i just know from personal experience with like someone that i encountered that was very into it it was just so much confirmation bias mm -hmm. like almost everything they said i could like without even thinking i could immediately think of the other side mm -hmm. to every single point like there might have been one out of like a hundred comments that i was like oh th oh yeah that is interesting i don't know the answer but like almost everything i'm like if you just like take a step back like you will figure it out too right if, if, if you can yeah <laughs> you know? no right yeah, yeah yeah and everything is like a yeah but yeah but and it's like well no like yeah some things are not yeah buts yeah it's just like fact i would really explore why the person doesn't believe in dinosaurs mm-hmm I think. And I just think from past experience, I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole field dedicated to that, right? Like, right. That's been around for a long time. Right. Talk so to I feel a like paleontologist. The evidence, yeah. Like the evidence is there. What do they get paid for? What does a paleontologist get paid for just to create create fake dinos? Yeah. And what is that protecting? Because definitely like conspiracy theories are, again, are like yeah. made because it's like they're lying to you. But why? Yeah. Like what is, what, was what the are the dinosaurs was that the were, reason? yeah, literally, yeah. what are the dinosaurs? Dinosaurs that were here like millions of years ago protecting and then also if tomorrow everyone found out the truth that dinos aren't real okay now what right how do we change <laughs> how do we change r.i.p the t-rex like <laughs> he's already been dead for millions so like <laughs> do i really care millions. like right i, don't I know, know.
Yeah. Uh, wow, that really just took a twist and a turn. Yeah. Hurrah. <laughs> like, okay. Facts. Okay. I feel like we did it. That it's was a good fun. one to end on. Yeah, that was that was good. <laughs> I I like this game. Yeah, me too. I think that we should play one. again. Mm-hmm. Hope you guys liked it. <laughs> Watch Le- Saltburn <laughs> if you like dark things. Not Le- comedy. Yeah, leave the conspiracies off the page. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we'll try to keep them off too. Yeah, I'll start. No, never mind. I was going to say I'll start researching conspiracies when I'm like on my deathbed, but I don't. I'd I don't. rather not know. Yeah. I do believe in dinosaurs. Me too. Let the record show. And the round earth. <laughs> I believe in that too, actually. I believe in the round earth. Yeah. I'm still questioning that one. I'm just kidding. I know you are. I can tell. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to our podcast. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Yay. Bye.